I don't find homosexuality bothers me. But it's sodomy and it's a grave sin. Hello and welcome to episode five. I'm not. Yeah. I'm going to stop saying episodes. Five. Moving forward of uh, Fox and Father with me, the Fox, and him, the the Father. Basically, uh, a show where Calvin tries to nurture me in the ways of righteousness, and um, I'm a soppy liberal who can't keep true. up with. This is very true. Thanks, man. You're a massive liberal. I'm glad you're admitting it now. I'm. I'm not a liberal. Everything goes. Everyone can do whatever they like. Who cares? As long as it's consenting adults. Yeah. What's that? What's That's wrong? liberalism. <laughs> yeah, but I'm conservative about other things. Which things? Um. I, I'm pretty anti-abortion. That's good. That's an important one, actually. Um, People are asking about that. Because I do believe in the sanctity of all life. Yeah. So, you know, but it, it, it doesn't bother me if... I, I'm not... A, I don't find homosexuality bother, it bothers me. I don't mind people smoking weed. But does it bother you if people go to hell? Uh, yeah, it does. I don't want to go to hell. Mm. But some people I would quite look forward to in my horrible... Um, Way uh, if I did end up in the other place, I wouldn't mind um, waving and going. Yeah, but the point is, if the Bible says certain acts mean people are sin sinning, and if they don't repent of those sins, they'll go to hell. Surely you want them to not do those things. Yeah, but it doesn't say that smoking joints is bad. No, in, uh... it does say homosexual acts are bad. <sighs> so, okay, God, I thought we could get. Off. Can we not just get off onto something normal? <laughs> what the? What's wrong with homosexual acts, man? It's sodomy, and it's a grave sin. But where well, that's does not it, for me and you to declare. Where, where does it say it in the Bible? All over the place. All over. It's all over the shop. It's yeah. all on every page. The message of the entire Bible is that God's good order consists of marriage between one man and one woman in a lifelong union under God. Any sexual acts outside of that are sinful. Between a man and a woman, it's fornication. Between two men, it's sodomy. Yeah, but then also sex before marriage is a sin. It so, is, yes. so I get it. All right, I'm, I'm not even going to ask the question I want to ask, Calv. But, but that is liberalism, saying that that's okay. Okay, but I'm just saying that these are sins that everybody commits. Sex for marriage is not... Is I'm it... not saying that everyone doesn't commit sins. I'm saying that surely it's a good thing to not want people to commit sins. Yeah, but, not but also sins. we're fallen and we don't... We, you know, we're not perfect, are we? So no, but I, I I can't condone walking around going up to gay people and going yeah. No, but there's a difference between con condemning people for homosexual acts and approving of homosexual acts. Well, I I, I I'm not sure I approve of anything. Like, I'm not sitting there going, oh well done, you've just had sex with three different people this week. I'm not like I wouldn't be like I'd I'd just be like it's your life, mate. <laughs> I'm, okay, I'm not approving, but I'm but I'm not. I'm not overtly disapproving. Okay. Because I know how crap I am at life. Okay. That's all right. Fair. Anyway, so, wow. How's all your right. week been? Yeah. Uh, it's all right. It's been fine. It's, oh. um, it's, um, I'm not actually physically here. Where are you? I mean, I'm hopefully not in a, not in a, in a French hospital with a dislocated shoulder. Oh, I thought you were being no. spiritual. You're not actually physically here. I thought it was... Going no, to no, I am I'm physically here, but by the wonders of technology, um, my week hasn't happened yet. So I'd have to... I'd have to... See, I was going to play the showbiz game and say, yeah, we had some great baptisms on Easter Sunday. Oh, April Fool's Day was as ridiculous as ever. What does it say about lying? What, is, what does it say about lying, <laughs> lying, lying in the Bible, Cal? Okay, so we're doing a pre-rec. <laughs> Lawrence is going off on his jollies. I'm going off with my kids because they need a, they need some dad time and I'm really, really looking forward okay. to it. So I will hopefully be um, grinning from ear to ear as my sons um, go down mountains oh. and grinning. Where are you Hopefully going? not in a French hospital, which is where I ended up last time I went skiing. Okay. Uh, with a dislocated shoulder and the guy that I walked in, I was like, I've never been in so much pain. And... Um, he uh, he just said, sit on this chair. And he sat me down on a hardback chair, grabbed hold of my arm, pulled it behind me and yanked it down and put it back in. He went, go, go. <laughs> and I'm like, thanks, buddy. Sure. I was really hoping for more. So that's hopefully where I will, I you can pray for my um, safe passage. Absolute safe journeys, yes. Anyway, I've got, um, uh, for those of you who are familiar with the format, we look at the 
work their news and then we come up with the story and we stick it in an envelope. We print it out. The uh, very industrious Theon prints it out and um, we stick it in an envelope and uh, then we discuss it. And um, I've got quite a funny one for Calv this week. So, um, hey, Calv. That makes me nervous. <laughs> this is for you, my love. Thank you, Wyatt. Stop calling me my love. Yes, sir. Anyway. Candid Calvin. Prospect magazine. Yay. I've done a lovely puff piece. Oh, no, it's a hit piece. Uh, former GB News presenter Calvin Robinson is an anti-woke crusader and just possibly Britain's strangest cleric of all time <laughs> by Andrew Brown, one of my greatest fans. I've got some quotes in there I just want to oh, read. But, gosh. Okay. So... Essentially, the Prospect... I don't know about Prospect magazine. Is it I've seen them before. Russ Bridger, is that the guy? Um, anyway, uh, the, it starts off saying that when I switched from showbiz to politics, it was not just politics, it was impoverished by the move. Um, what just, else was it? Just a quick point to whoever wrote this, Andrew Brown. I didn't switch from, politi from showbiz to politics. Mm. I was cancelled from showbiz because I didn't clap along when people chopped children's dicks off. By people and, like him. I like people like you, and I don't believe that Britain is a racist country full of horrible white Andrew people. Brown and who's his editor? These these are all these people are all ex Guardian journalists. Anyway, but what he seems to do this this guy is he goes um, nodding along while Robinson, resplendent is in his dog collar, smirkingly explains that Joe Biden is a paedophile who used to shower inappropriate with his daughter. I think that um, is inappropriate. Does Andrew not think it's inappropriate for Joe yeah. Biden to be showering with, with his daughter? Quick question. And she did write it in her diary. Yeah. And that diary w was taken by the FBI. Right. And so they did. They, it, it's true, okay. Andrew. And, you know, we know that people on the left, uh, on the hard left, on the woke left, have no problem with minor attractive people, Ugh. as they're now called. But then it's... Um, it the goes the, on the say, millstone we, people, as I call them. We presumably spend so much time on X because we've been thrown out of almost every other part of show business, even GB News. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is true. That is true. Defund the BBC, defund Ofcom, it says. Anyway, um, reincarnated in their old show, uh, it, it, they sit in leather armchairs and suck ostentatiously on large cigars. It's true. It's a, it's a criminal offence, isn't you it? Know. How dare you? Robinson also has his own show, Common Sense Crusade, oh, on Lotus Eaters. Thank you for the promotion, Andrew. Thank on you. Lotus Eaters, uh, on Thursday, so yeah. do tune in. Thursday, 3 p.m. Anyway, the article just goes on to um, sort of have a proper pop at Calvin. So uh, he loves for me. being So, Calvin, quickly, why are you the, um, why are you Britain's strangest cleric? I mean, we've had some pretty strange clerics of people who've dressed up as mermaids and people who've done all kinds of stuff. So I don't know if I am the strangest, but they say I descend into murky conspiracy theories. I didn't see one named there. Islamophobia. Yes, I am afraid of Islam, but it's not irrational. And QAnon. QAnon. I love the QAnon thing. What is the oh, QAnon what? thing? That's a dog whistle for, for Trump supporters, is it not? Yeah, but what does it stand for? I've never looked into it. I, I get caught. I'm, I was, I'm perfectly happy just being labelled far right extremist without the uh, queuing on. Well, why, why not just call me a far right extremist? It's much easier than all those puff words, isn't it? Why well, bother writing about you? Oh, clickbait. Yeah, it's clout chasing. It's give us some hits. No one's heard of our rubbish magazine, and we don't get any. I mean, look at the engagement on the post, right? No one even bothers. So this is what they're doing. They're, if we antagonise people that we dislike, we'll get some traffic. Yeah. So essentially, they're trying to make money. I hope you get a few hits. I hope people look at your website and you make some money from it. And interestingly, the other thing I, that I noticed when I when it popped up and I saw it and it made me laugh because they turned us into a stained glass window was um, <laughs> was that there isn't a single criticism of any of the ideas no. at they, all. They it's can. just uh, you know I, I and it's for, and it's sort of full of lies and rubbish. It's but, sm smearing. It's ad hominems. It's nasty. It's vitriolic. But you're right. Not once do they challenge any of our ideas that we've discussed. No, it just says it says kind of I nod along like I'm trying to, which I That's do. That's rude. Well, I, I don't think you do. We, dis we disagree all the time. Well, we do disagree all the time. But I but I don't mind ca my casting as the kind of, you know. Well, maybe I think whatever about that you know and you you're quite particular about what you think but it's interesting that they would criticize and um and say nothing so it I was think it was quite christophobic to be honest with you christophobic yeah christophobia yeah is that a thing yeah yeah they're going on about my dog collar and my faith and all this they're yeah anti-christian is what they are what but should we do they also posted uh, a big 
piece on GB News and Paul, Paul Marshall and I think Winston was mentioned in there, they're clearly going after a certain demographic who they think will get them the hits. Right. It's just cheap journalism, isn't it? It's very weak and lame, really. I used to really enjoy journalism. And I there's still I still enjoy reading Alistair Heath tell us that the whole world is going to oh, yeah. completely screwed and the country's gone. I love reading him once a week. And um, I do love reading Alison Pearson. But, I love uh, reading Alison Pearson. And occasionally I do quite t- like to read that woman who's, uh, I think she gets um, she gets rather excited, Marina Hyde, who likes to write about me a lot. I don't know her. She's a Guardian journalist. But I can't stand it. She devotes, she's, no, she's devoted tens of thousands of words to why? what's wrong with me. These people get so irate and emotional, don't they? I Life's think she wants short. to make romance explosion with oh, me. Oh, really? That's what I think. Okay, right. you know, that makes they, sense. The way that they hide their hatred, yeah. they hide their romance explosion with behind hatred, with hatred. But anyway, that was just a, it was just a, it was a brief opening to you to see if I could knock you off kilter, which it's not worked. I love it. I mean, I don't love it. I I don't like it's no one likes being hated, and I don't like reading these. I, most of the time, I don't read these negative pieces. But it just interests me that people spend so much of their time and day hating people. Like I, there are loads of ideas that I hate, and I try to challenge those ideas. But I don't can't think of many people that I hate. And I certainly wouldn't waste time obsessing over them. That yeah. this feels unhealthy to me. I do. I do obsess over... Like I, I know we're not meant to hate and all that sort of stuff, but I really struggle with someone like Sadiq Khan. Mm. I, I really do. I just... There's something He's about despicable man. him that makes me really... I don't. I, if it's not hate, it's something quite close to hate. But then we talk about how to replace him and how to get him out of office and we have productive... Or constructive ideas. Well, who's going to? He's not going to be replaced or got out of office. Well, well you're trying. You're standing. I know, man. Against him. I mean, that, I mean, he's obviously worried now. Yeah. He'll be. Well, he was worried last time. He'll be panicking last time. Last time he called me a far right extremist. First time I was ever anyone called me a far right. Oh, really? Extremist. It was Sadiq Khan who did it. What do you think? Quickly, while we were talking, what do you think about the um, the uh, the reform guys going after every time that they call, get called far right? Yeah. C- complaining. Do you think it's a good? A, good tactical move or do you think it's just why bother well Bo one of my colleagues at Lotus Eaters was a candidate for Swindon with the Mm. reform party he got cancelled a couple weeks ago now what did he say what piece of heresy did he say Uh, I think he made a joke he's also quite light hearted I seem to remember yeah he made a joke you can't make jokes anymore Um, he's very proud to be English can't be proud of your nation anymore just all things that you'd think reform would would be in favour of or supportive of or at least not bothered by Mm. But if you want to get rid of a candidate today, just complain about them. Yeah, cancel culture is um, is not is not the right thing. Well, anyway, that was my that was ow that oh, was my bit. You can I'll do one for you. Okay, what am I getting? What am I getting from Calvin? Uh, okay. Uh, oh right, yeah, 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 yeah. This is interesting because I, I again. I've got views on this. Um, Luton Town Hall sparks fiery clash after waving Palestinian flag. And then, just the other day, we got a um, a Pakistani flag on On the Houses of Parliament. Westminster Abbey. Oh, Westminster Abbey. Yeah, even worse. Okay. A religious institution. I've got an instinctive feeling about all of this stuff. Um, But what's, what's your take on the flags? Well, over Luton Town Hall, Palestinian flag. This is England. Yeah. Either raise the St. George's Cross or the Union flag. Potentially a county flag or the Commonwealth flag. I can't think of any other flags that would be suitable. There it- should, certainly should be no foreign flags flying. But if, the, if, it, if there's like a Pakistani delegation coming to London, right, you know, I see it's quite a nice thing if... Well, but maybe they get photographed it. behind. But not maybe not on Westminster flag. Abbey. No, maybe not in a Christian church. A photo opportunity, perhaps, but not above. Uh, because it does have Islamic symbolism in it, doesn't it? So you are. Uh, but I think Welby does want the whole kind of universalism that you criticise me for. Hashtag coexist. Hashtag coexist yeah. with everybody. We're all brothers of Abraham, sons of Abraham. What does it matter? So we why is the same God? West, Westminster Abbey? Why not just stick it outside the? I don't know where they're going to be greeted. You could stick it outside. Right. I don't know, Downing Street for a day. The politicians can stand behind both flags as they shake hands and get their photo opportunity. But we cannot put foreign flags above our buildings. That's inappropriate. Certainly, I don't imagine you're going to see many Union Jacks on the top of um, mosques in other countries. I doubt it. 
But what about the Palestinian flag over, over... Should any government building be able to fly a flag which isn't the British flag? Oh, well, I mean, we, we saw the same thing with the Ukraine flag. It's still emblazoned still in many there, churches. Well, you walk down, um, what, whatever it's called, Whitehall, it, there's more There's more Ukraine flags than there are um, Palestinian... Uh, sorry, what, Union Jack. Jack. It's just virtual Also, signaling. can somebody explain to me why... Um, sorry, just while we're on the... Mm. We've traversed onto the Ukraine thing. Why every single news channel goes the Jewish people have got to drop leaflets and say that it's going to be collateral damage and you know and you mustn't fire any missiles and you're yeah. terrible evil but no one says to the Russians or the Ukrainians you know don't to the Ukrainians don't send drones in to kill people yeah. in Russia what is that that's just standard anti-semitism isn't it I don't, I don't why are there no the star of uh, Jewish flags uh, Israeli flags outside um, government buildings because not people one people don't want their buildings to get smashed is why yeah, it's fear of the Mohammedans rather than dislike of the Jews. It might be a bit of both, but neither should be up. We shouldn't have Israeli flags up any more than we have Palestinian flags up. We certainly shouldn't have Ukrainian flags up any more than we have Russian flags up. And we, and most of all, we should not have any LGBTQ plus I I I, I flags up. I would definitely remove the LGBTQ plus, plus plus. Well, I don't mind a little rainbow one. I'm, I know you and I disagree about that. I don't mind a rainbow one because of why. Uh, well, because I, I know that you think homosexuality is dreadful sin and all this stuff. That's not right? what I think. It's what the Bible teaches. All right, but you, had, you admitted to that earlier on. All right. So why would you have a flag? That because if sin? I was gay, yeah. which I'm not, well, 17... That's yet to be decided. <laughs> <laughs> Verdict's still out oh, on that yeah, one. <laughs> <laughs> 17% gay, if that I am. And I was living in a time where I would get beaten up for being gay, for gay bashing, and I saw in a pub a little flag i right. would feel safe and i won that really okay. that flag would make you feel safe well i'd know that i was going Come to be off. around people that weren't going to beat me up okay so it's about othering and separating and kind of creating a safe space oh, God, God. <laughs> <laughs> 10 pound in the swear jar honestly it's a stupid exercise no one needs to overtly but, celebrate their sexuality whatever their sexuality I'm not, I'm not is. talking about celebrating sexuality well what is the it the progressive then? pride flag i have an issue with because it's not well a... forget the progressive one just the traditional six colored rainbow flag that replaced the the rainbow of the covenant between god and his people which was seven colors let's talk about that flag why is that one okay because we come from a time, a historical time, where um, homophobic abuse and violence was commonplace. But it's not anymore. And that's, that's that's a good thing. That's true. So that's why I say I don't really mind it because it doesn't mean anything anymore. But that, it, that and they know that as well, which is why they changed it into okay. the progressive project. Thought project. experiment. We, 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 we had a time where black people were not accepted in society, right? And there was no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. Should we have the BLM flag up in pubs and, and places to, to no. show that black people are no longer... No, because it's because the BLM flag, this is what I'm trying to get to. Or should there be a black flag then that says black people welcome here? Pirates flag you, you should have. That's racist. Is it? <laughs> I thought pirates were heroes, but, like Johnny Depp, pirates the Caribbean. But should we? And um, if not, why not? No, I don't think you should. But why I don't, not? I don't, I don't, but I wouldn't object to someone who was from, say, say someone who moved to England from right. Nigeria right. and their roots were very Nigerian. Right. And if they had a flagpole outside the house and they flew a Nigerian flag, I'd be like, go for it. Right, that's fine. That's a per, that's an individual, you know, in my study, I've got the Union Jack, I've got St. George's Cross and I've got the uh, Jamaican flag next to each other to express all, all of my heritage. But I don't think that, any, I don't think the Jamaican flag should be above Westminster Abbey. No, I, I I agree with that. I think what my objection to the modern iteration of the progressive pride flag is the fact that it's now a, the flag of the revolutionaries. It's the flag of it's the Trantifa flag. Essentially. Sure, but you're you're kind of shifting the goalposts because we agree on the on the the radical trans flag. It's the rainbow flag we're talking about. I don't know why. You no, think I'm that's talking about the, the. You never see the rainbow flag up in London. You see the progressive pride flag okay, up. In should London. it be up in London? No. Okay. Absolutely not. Okay. Because a, it looks like a Nuremberg rally, and b, it celebrates the mutilation of children. And C... No, no, the rainbow one. I'm still, I'm still talking about the they rainbow don't, one. You never see the rainbow but one. I'm saying, should you? No, I do think if people want to put the rainbow one up, they can. I don't think it should be emblazoned all over London. But I think if a, if a bar wants to have a rainbow flag, I just don't like the progressive... I just think that's one. divisive and unhelpful. I don't think it's, it's a very good thing. All right, fine. But I'd be up for seeing more Union flags. I would. So, so, should it be, so should they put only British flags on British public Absolutely. buildings? Absolutely. Let's okay. have a simple That would be unity. a simple law. If I was mayor of London, I would go, you will yeah. only ever see a British flag flying. Yeah. I'm sure there is a law already. Is there? 
pretty sure there is. Well, obviously, Sadiq Khan hasn't read that part of it, or any other boroughs that when churches who, churches them. seem so susceptible to this this uh, there's certainly law kind of laws in what flags churches can have, and they dis, they disregard that law all the time. Why? So so they so you get the in American Constitution you get the literalists and the interpreter interpretationists. So you get those that take the Constitution at face value, literally as it is, okay. and they. That's the literalist, and then you get those that interpret it. Is there any room for interpretation within um, Christianity over stuff like a flag? What do I mean? No, no, who, who, that's who, a canon law, right? So, the so that's, law, that's a man to the letter law. of the law and the spirit of the law. But that's it's not a faith issue. Yeah, it's just the law of the land, right? And uh, in terms of what, what do you know? The well, I suppose it is a faith issue because, especially within the side of the church, what we've seen is rainbow flags on the altar, which clearly shows some kind of sacrifice to a different God because the altar is the place where we enter into Christ's perpetual sacrifice where he died once and for all on the cross for us and that we believe that that's partaking of heaven coming to earth and us going to heaven meeting in the middle and we are it's the, it's the, the sacrifice of the lamb the lamb of God and so for people to be replacing Christ with a rainbow flag kind of signifies that they have found a new God so th there is a theological reason. But maybe they're just trying to include the, the congregation. Well, no doubt, but it's poor theology, and it, th this is how we lead to this is how we lead people or souls to damnation through poor theology, making silly, misguided mistakes that aren't very well thought through. Some of them don't seem like silly, misguided mistakes. They seem extremely deliberate. Yeah. Um, in terms of certainly the church altars, and you see a lot of like the people that do like their progressive pride flag church altars definitely talk about it a lot yeah and um yeah i don't think there's really place for me because it's political there is no place for politics in the church no and every time a national institution tries to tries to engage in politics it screws up yeah. and at the moment we've got this you know i mean sadiq khan is going to be rolling out those flags again unless i beat him yeah. Well, caveat: there's no place for parties and politics in the church, but the faith is political by its very nature. Well, didn't they? They used to say that the um, uh, the church was the Conservative Party at prayer. Well, yeah. So, but what's what's happened then? I know it's become the Lib Dems at prayer, unfortunately. The Church of England. The Lib Dems are. What do the Lib Dems believe in? Anything and everything. You're, am I a Lib Dem? No, not really. No. Mm. To be fair to you, you're liberal, but not that liberal. Mm. Okay, well, I reckon it's, um, I, I'm not too against the, uh, I'm much more against the Palestinian flag hanging over Luton Town Hall because I don't think that British uh, council buildings and municipal buildings yes. should take a side in a foreign conflict. Absolutely, we agree with you on that. Yeah. That's what. So the Pakistani flag over Westminster Abbey, I think, is in poor taste. Yes, but um, I wouldn't mind it if he was, if the Pakistani ambassador or the Pakistan. What, what was the reason for it again? I think it's a, there's a delegation coming in, okay. but I also think it's insensitive when it's sort of also a period of Lent. And yes, it's a, it's a you know, and it Holy does time have, of year. But I mean, are we just being a bit curmudgeonly about it? <laughs> it is Holy Week. The church should be reminding people of Holy Week. I don't, yeah. I can't get my head around why they would put up a foreign flag with a foreign faith on top of a Christian abbey. It's bonkers. It's appeasement, isn't it? It is appeasement. And it doesn't well, work. Justin, Justin Welby thinks he's a politician, essentially. He thinks he's the opposition. And this is his major problem. What, 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 have we had archbishops before that are this bad? So I seem to remember they just sort of quietly got on with Yeah, we have. And... We've had we had some pretty bad archbishops. How was Rowan? Memory. Huh? Rowan? What? Yeah, he was, he was okay. At least he was a good theologian. Yeah. He's become a bit wet in his old age, but he was he was okay in his time. And who was bad? Who who get, no, get, give us a give us a? Well, we've had archbishops that have been beheaded. Uh, we've had archbishops that have gone against parliaments. So we've had archbishops that have gone against the crown. Um, we've had a pretty rocky history, actually, with archbishops and their relationship with the state. I've got a pretty rocky history with our current archbishop yeah I, I just think he's throwing the whole thing to the dogs thomas beckett was a good one thomas beckett was good but, but someone rid me of this turbulent priest and what did thomas beckett do henry which annoyed II. um henry ii uh well he essentially said that church matches should be settled in church court rather than in the secular court 
which is right, but we've we've done away with that since then. What talk me through that? So church matters. So like ecclesial matters. The, the church has its own court um, because the church has its own canon laws, and the church is not involved in, in temporal issues in the same way. So the the secular court should not be dictating over the church courts. But that's how it was for for millennia until until relatively recently. When was it? Twelve. 12- Hundred and something, he got killed, or eleven hundred. I don't know. Gosh, I don't know the year, but he was. Um, so we got rid of that, and that's why he was turbulent. He was a turbulent. Well, he was. Of... Henry, he was one of Henry the Second's good friends, but then he became an obstacle for him because he challenged his authority. That's that's happening a lot as well. Good friends are becoming obstacles yeah. in these ever yeah. spiraling and di- and divergent times. That's true. Um, anyway, let's look at the. Um, uh yeah i want to know about this because i'm i'm um that's interesting what? so when i was walking uh for reasons i won't go into uh at, to the high court yesterday oh gosh morning i saw um this huge demonstration outside about julian assange oh uh, yeah what's he up to now so assange reprieve is another lie hiding the real the goal of keeping him endlessly locked up. How long has he been locked up now? It's got to be best part of a decade, mustn't it? Well, I think he's been in prison for about five years, right? Mm. But he was on house arrest for how long? For, he was in the Ecuadorian. Yeah. He was in the Ecuadorian embassy well, for not five house arrest, years. But exile kind of. Yeah, it's just insane. What did he do? He exposed governments doing dodgy stuff. Of course, they're going to clamp down on him because they don't want they want to set an example, so no one else does that. It's it's very very bad to me that people aren't outraged by what's happened to him. Yeah, that it's sort of acceptable to think of him just as some sort of well, he's a criminal. He's a sort of that for a while he was a rapist in Sweden, and for well, these these dodgy crimes that have been put forward against him by America. I, I, I don't believe there's any strong evidence against any of them. And, and they're using old, uh, dodgy, archaic crimes in order to get him. It's an entrapment situation. It's kind of like a, they want revenge for what he's done. But the problem, I, as far as I see it, is that the British government is aiding the American government rather than protecting him. Yeah. Or, or at least arguing for justice to be served. In a sort of terribly bad analogy type way, I feel very guilty for not standing, not guilt, you know, it's not like deep, terrible guilt, but I feel now the importance of not standing up for someone like Alex Jones when he was cancelled. Yeah, yeah. Or Tommy or Katie or those people when they were cancelled, that it seems that this is an in your plain sight. There was Amnesty International out there. So usually when Amnesty International aren't tweeting um, something about white privilege or yeah, white, white superiority, white supremacy. Yeah, they do care about the fact that this man has been imprisoned essentially without charge for nearly ten years, Crazy. and that. And if England is, which it must be, in collusion with the American government, yeah. then we should all have a major, major, major problem with that. Yeah, it is collusion because what did he expose? Illegal acts during war, you know, killing civilians um, and unarmed personnel. What else do you expose the 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 state spying on on um, civilians as well? Like all kinds of stuff that has been covered up for decades. He exposed all that. Of course, they want him dead, not just locked up. But where's the well, outrage? They, they, were, they planned to have him to kidnap him and kill him. The Americans didn't they? Oh, I don't know. They they planned on doing it. And um, the, the, a free press is really really important, and the most information is really really important. So to to he is a totem. For the state of the confident the state of confidence that we all have in our nation and and in justice and if the british courts are colluding with the american judicial system which has this weird thing where it can rechange the charges every time to keep him he's just he's being left to rot do you think we have a free press no i don't think we have a free press mm-hmm. because what this is what's going to happen with youtube and I, I never understood why youtube is um and Google on, they, they might, the, the antitrust laws don't come in or, you know, monopolies laws don't come in because you cannot have a search engine like Google yeah. that changes overnight the meaning of the word bloodbath. Yeah, yeah. Following Trump's yeah. use of the word bloodbath. You cannot 
have your mind messed with by an algorithm. I mean, it's, it's, because you can have your mind messed with. It's literally 1984 when they're rewriting the meanings of words <coughs> and changing the history. They're doing it right under our noses. And Google has too much power. It's bigger than any government. I don't see what any government can do. If you Google any contentious issue, hmm. you will not. Get, you will be lied to. Yeah. Well, you saw Google's AI recently, didn't you? Where you yeah. search for past kings or something, and everyone came out black because there's a bias, an anti-white bias, and a pro-black bias in order to send a political message. Whereas it should be about truth. It should be about openness and, and knowledge and access to knowledge. So you can Google anything and find the information and then make your own mind up. But they want to tell you what to think, not just give you the information. That's the problem. But the, that's been the problem with the press all along. Yeah, and the fact that the press is very, very heavily, and certainly Google employees, I think it's something like 97% donated to Democrats or registered Democrats yeah. and the 3%. The, without a plurality of views, yeah. you're in trouble. So hence the horrible censorship you get on YouTube when you, you know, once you've been de off conned mm. You're then on YouTube, and why you've got to build, you know, these platforms where you can broadcast outside of it to well, people that follow you and people who want to be involved in the debate. I think YouTube's worse than Ofcom. Yeah, the censorship they have on there is even worse. And so, what what do we have in terms of platforms? Everyone always goes put put it on Rumble. Yeah, you put it on Rumble, but great, Rumble has a rubbish algorithm, and no one ever finds your videos, so there's no audience there. So it doesn't really matter. Like there has to be a way to have a public market marketplace that is open to all and free to all. And right now it's all controlled by small minority groups such well, as Google or... or well, Apple. Musk is trying to change that and and I think it's going to be successful. I wonder what the, you know, I, I think he, you know, he's going to turn it into the everything app. But I, I find you you forget the power of censorship, Yeah, how powerful it is. So once a narrative is formed, like if they want to take someone down, yeah. your prospect magazine yeah. article. It's how just dare we sit on leather chairs? Slowly just drip into yeah, people's course. head that you're a bit of a nutter. Yeah. And once that uh, narrative is established, it's very hard to break because you're, it's that yeah. old uh, analogy of going of the lunatic in the lunatic asylum, the same man in the lunatic asylum saying, there's nothing wrong with me, I'm not yeah. mad. Yeah. You start to, the lady doth protest too much. Yeah. So, um, I but I think with the advent of an open Twitter, and community notes, people are feeling more confident that actually that's where they're going to get their information from. It is yeah, the number one most but, visited news site in the world. But even that's a problem because we're giving too much power to one individual again. He might be on our side in some of these issues, great, but what about when he's not? Yeah, well, he's yeah. What about when the when the brain implant comes in and stuff like that? Or what about when he dies or leaves it to someone else or sells it or people? orchestrate a coup or like we can't put, pin all our hopes on this one guy and this one up no it's not good so what does one do then i don't know revolution in your own little mind well there's you know there's speakers corner down, down hyde park with 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 bob the builder and people like that uh having actual debates in in real life i don't know stepping away from the internet is always a good thing yeah i i i, I we've spoken about it before but i think i do i, I can't if someone held a gun to your head and said, turn the internet on or off? Oh, off. Absolutely You'd off. turn the whole thing off. Biggest mistake in, in modern history, I think. Why? Well, we used to think there was a virtue in being an expert in a field and, and dedicating your life to something for the greater glory of God, but also for the community. Uh, and that's gone. Everyone thinks they're an expert in everything now because we can access all knowledge. But of course, we can't be an expert in everything. What it means is that we all know very little about lots of things. And that's meant that we all seem to have an opinion on everything, myself included, and we become armchair experts. And that's not good for society. And I think that's part of the reason we're going down. Part of the reason is what we talked about last week and that everyone's siloed off in their own corners now because everyone wants to be around people who think like them, again, myself included, but this is what we do. It's natural. And we need to break out of that. And I think the old model of having the church, having the pub, having the local community center, like people living with people who might be different to themselves, but it's about where you are rooted in a community, rooted in place, location. That was true diversity. That was good. And they've done away with that. You know, over lockdown, they closed the churches, they closed the pubs. Most of the pubs are dying out anyway. I mean, the, the church is doing everything they can to, to kick people out. And so what we're left with is this internet that is massively controlled. The Labour government are talking, I mean, not the Labour government, the potential Labour government are talking about blocking VPNs in this country. So we will be controlled in every sense of the word, much like communist China. How can they block a VPN? Well, they can just tell the ISPs that v VPNs are no longer allowed, and the ISPs will just find ways to block them. But that's like... So that, you'll have no freedom. 
But that, they, how are they going to get that past anybody? I mean, they don't seem to have to at this point. Because the say bonuses it's... of technology are that the, these things will cut through. Now, who knows how Bitcoin and that stuff will play out. But technology is also being used for good. Sure. It's being used to get information to people. So you can, yeah, okay, you you present quite a negative view of like how everyone becomes a jack of all trades and master of none. I get, yeah. I get that. But at the same time... If you are, if the traditional thing was you sent people off to do some research and then come back and give you some information, with the climate hoax wouldn't have been exposed, and if it hadn't been for technology and, and the online capacity to be able to watch films like the climate movies, has the climate hoax been exposed, or is it just a small minority of people who've seen that content that we've seen and, and think, okay, this is hoax? Or do the vast majority of people still think this is a serious issue, a crisis that we're in? I think most people would, uh, from what from what I understand and from polling I've done, most people yeah. th- have bought the climate hoax. Yeah, exactly. Stuff. So it hasn't solved that. I think the but, greater uh, but issue... The, but the, the important 10% that haven't, yeah. or 10 and 20% that haven't, are going to be really important. In that, but they always the would have done. Mm-hmm. Like the, the people that jumped down these rabbit holes always would have done. I think the greater issue isn't just the internet, it's academia, and the whole peer review process has gone down down the hill. So, so at this point... Anything that's put through academia is woke. It's all with a liberal bias. And so it doesn't matter what experts are saying because the experts are no longer experts. Is there ever a place for censorship in this world? Sure. Where? Well, in safeguarding. I I wouldn't want grown adults talking to young children about their sexuality. I wouldn't want drag queens giving story time, for example, and talking about their own perversions. Um, There are boundaries that we have for a reason. And I am a massive supporter of free speech, always has been, have been, as anyone who follows me will know. However, I'm not a free speech absolutist. There are certain things that we should protect against. Mm. And, we, and we do, but we seem to be, because it's not actually written down, they're more like norms that flow through society yeah. as accepted truths that we've developed over many, many yeah. thousands of generations, that we've just shifted society into a way where so much more is acceptable than wasn't before and the way of covering that up is to censor any disapproval of it yeah. so if you do not support the progressive cause mm. you are going to go through your own digital struggle session yeah. that's what's going to happen and um i think you're right i mean i i'm still astonished that i end up doing this rather than being sat on a film set and that's essentially down to years of um the narrative being pumped out by the media that progression progressivism is the only answer and actually it's caused more harm in this world yeah. on every measurable metric than anything else that i've witnessed yeah. and i think if we didn't have the internet i don't think there would have been as much sense like sensationalization and hyperbole around the so-called pandemic i think people would have got on with their lives a bit more yes we still had the tv blasting it every day but that's easy to turn off because we're on our devices all the time looking at what the so-called mass are saying and it's all, never the mass it's always a vocal minority we're all but is that is that narrative being honed by uh, design or is it oh yeah so you know we, we we know we've got the is it the 77th brigade yeah yeah we've got he the tweeted units. me that twat. i mean that gentleman tobias selwood to, is it him or no maybe it was tom tuggan uh, yes tom tuggan tweeted you yeah yeah tom, t- tom's a good guy actually is he yeah tobias not so much but tom is no, no um it's pretty mean to me but yeah i saw that that was that was uncalled for i thought he went below the belt with that yeah but generally speaking he's a good christian chap is um, he? yeah i think you two would actually have a good conversation if you sat down together interesting though that he would attack for no we're out of nowhere. No, I think there must have been something else going on there. I think I said, I think it was something about we've already got our own flag or something. Anyway, I can't remember. Um, so there is a good, good place for established censorship that you would say, which would be, yeah. Well, with films. everything, there's nuance, right? I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, films is a good example. Yeah. There's certain content that shouldn't be put out. Yeah. South Park is interesting. You South know, Park's great. South Park. So, so, comedy and satire should always be allowed. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, but, you yeah. know, I wouldn't want to see snuff films, for example. There's certain well, there. Twitter is one long snuff film if you're not careful. Yeah. yeah. I can't bear that. And um, I, I think we've become we've become immu- inured to violence. No, I don't deal with any of that stuff. I can't. I just can't. What, what about people using their cameras to film tragedies? It's awful. I've ne- 
I've never understood the human, the apparently there's a natural human capacity to want to see an emergency. I've never understood, you know, when people stop or slow down and mm. a traffic emergency and look at what's going on. I've never understood that I can't. I just... Rubbernecking. It's, yeah. it's to remind yourself that you're alive. Right. It, it's a, it's a self-affirmation. Is that what it is? It must be. Because if you look at someone else who's dead, the first thing you're going to think is, God, they're dead and I'm alive. Wow. Lucky me. I wonder what it looks like. I've always found it grim. I think it is a bit grim. You know, we've got... Yeah. Anyway... Um, so YouTube is screwed. We're in trouble. No, YouTube is, YouTube is great. We are screwed because we're reliant on YouTube. Yeah. We well, we're not. We, 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 we'll, we're building something else. Well, not just us in particular. But it, but I can't see Labour government bringing in VPNs. That just sounds ridiculous. Well, I think the, the thing we need to keep saying to people is download a VPN now, get prepared now with a VPN and get it installed and just in case anything happens because... We know now that governments can change like that and the country can change like that and the culture can change like that. You know, we saw that with, we never ever thought in this country we'd have a lockdown. We would tell people you're not allowed to leave your own home. You're not allowed freedom of assembly. You're not allowed freedom of leaving your own home. Never in a million years. But yeah. it, it happened. It so it worked. could quite happen that the internet could get locked down or YouTube could get locked down or something. And we'd be, we'd be stuck because we're reliant on these things now. So we need a VPN to get around them. Well, it's only one generation. Like we're not going to lose all our skills in one generation. I mean, yeah, even yeah. I can work out, I can put something together. I'm not, you know, completely useless. I don't really well, bother. I don't know. I think it's not good though. I think it's it's been bad. Anyway, that's, um, yeah, it's a, it's a worry that the world is heading towards censorship, more censorship. What would it take to move away from the internet entirely, like a natural disaster or a war or something? Uh, I, no, I think I think people will. I think people will actually move away from the internet entirely as a as a lifestyle choice. Yeah. I think people will find places where there is none. Yeah. R so rather than actively not do it, actually, there will be. It'll be everywhere with Starlink. But I think that it's people will make the life style choice because yeah. i think the damage that it does to you know even i look at my phone sometimes and it makes me anxious yeah yeah you know and that's not good and usually it's emails i mean twitter's oh, twitter. twitter for me but it's i'm like emails I'm like oh, oh God, no, it's what, too much it's too much what next so maybe i should have given up my mobile phone for lent i gave up emails for a while i had an auto reply on that says if you really want to contact me either text me or send me a letter in the post Right. Just to get people to think, like, do I really need to, to speak to him right now? Because people just send off emails left, right, and center. I, know. It's, I, I can't handle it. I, have, it's, I don't get paid enough to have a PA, yet at the same time, I get too many emails to, to respond to. It's, it's unrealistic. Yeah. It's a stress. When I was a teacher, I uh, well, when I was an assistant principal, I put a policy in place that said, you cannot email anyone outside of office hours. And people were like, well, but what if I'm working? I said, like, well, you can work outside of office hours if you choose to, but set your email, schedule it. So it sends within office hours. Because what you, what we find is when people email each other outside of office hours, they feel obliged to also work outside of office hours. And yeah. then people just end up working the whole time. It's just, there's no work-life balance. It's unhealthy. It is really unhealthy. Especially if it's your boss that's emailing you, you feel that pressure. Yeah, we, that's actually quite a good rule. Hmm. Um, and certainly there should be rules put on children, but it's impossible when the adults aren't. You know more about that. Children do not need unsupervised access to the internet and they do not ever need a smartphone. Yeah, but they've all got them. Yeah. Looking forward to meeting your kids. <laughs> um, anyway, is there a final little envelope on the other side? I see, I see, I see. I see. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's this one? Puff Daddy. Mm. Is he still Raided around? Raided LA mansion is revealed in new video, video showing busted safes, pill bottles scattered beside his bed and clothes strewn across colossal walking walk road after the feds smashed down his door in sex trafficking pro. Did you just dead name P, did he? Did I? Yeah. What's his real name? I don't yeah. know. You called him Puff Daddy. I remember him when he was Puff Daddy. Oh, right. Yeah, I, I remember him as Puff Daddy. What on earth is, is rap music I mean, about to go through its Harvey Weinstein moment? I've always been suspicious of him since I saw those videos of him with a young Justin Bieber. And it was just the, the, the relationship just seemed inappropriate. And he was like, why have you called me lately? We used to hang out. I'm like, what do you mean used to hang out? He's about 14 now. Um, and obviously there's that, there's that relationship with him and Usher as well. It's all a bit, all a bit sketchy and all a bit, oh, frankly, it looks a bit homosexual. I don't know what's going on there, but he looks a bit... P. Diddy comes across as a massive groomer for the hip hop scene. I don't know if that's true, but it's certainly sort of starting to come out. So whatever's happening is happening, though. And so as far as I understand, 
they've tried to keep it pretty quiet. And then he, but he is, he's famous for recording pretty much everything that's gone on in his house, right? Right. So why are the feds going after him? I don't know. Because, it, you know, seeing as it's amazing that Ghislaine Maxwell is mm. spending 10 years in prison for facilitating Jeffrey Epstein stuff, and yet no one has been, you know, properly bought. Yeah, what's happened? All the, the what, list what happened to all, all those people she smuggled? Yeah, yeah. well, know? not just the people that smuggled. What about all the people that spent time on on his island? What has happened to them? There've been no consequences whatsoever. They're rich and they can get away with exactly. whatever it's they want. It's disgusting, man. Yeah, the, the rich. So by... Are they going after P Diddy to protect other people? Do you Perhaps, think? maybe. I don't know. Or is he the bad? Is he the bad boy for life? Like he says, <laughs> is he just a really bad boy? That was awful. Bad boys for life. Well, that's what he kept saying. I don't story. like the whole scene. It's just. They, they become the caricatures of themselves and all that gang violence and stuff. Like, you've made it a success of your life. You've got rich. You don't need to be doing all of that stuff. Yeah. I don't know why they glorify the, the violence because it just encourages the whole community to, to want to mirror that. I don't well, one helpful. of the conspiracy theories that you might be into is that this was encouraged. They were encouraged by um, people to be to the more violent. Right, the East Coast, West course. Coast rivalry was encouraged oh, in the, the hope of what? people would kill, they'd kill, all kill each other. Right. So was this the FBI or the CIA that wanted to kill off the black community? I remember this yeah, conspiracy yeah. theory. So Are we going to get called conspiracy theorists again? Again. Well, <laughs> I, that's why I opened it up with a conspiracy theory. Right, right. Well, the whole um, Shug Knight thing and, and Tupac What and happened Biggie. to Tupac? I used to, weirdly, I've seen when I was, I still don't know. I, when I was 13, uh, the, the person I empathised with most and had most common with in the whole world was Tupac. So weird. In in a boarding school. There's in, a word for that, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> what, what is it? <laughs> no, no, but I, I, he was singing, I was sat in Rendell's house. I can posh, just see you, little posh, little posh white boy with your, with your hat on. No, 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 it wasn't that. Oh. It, I was genuinely moved by... That, like he was there trapped in the ghetto. Yeah. And I was, Harrow, I was there here. I was here trapped in a dormitory. Oh, Look, I'm not, I'm not Bless you. lying. You know what? Your I was critics there are right. You like, have white privilege. I was just like, <laughs> you, yes. What do you mean? How many, how many brothers have fell victim to the streets? The streets like, of Harrow. How, how, how many brothers will fall victim to the streets of Harrow walking stop it, around? Stop it, honestly. That's You're giving them ammunition. Stop it. I love it. That's what I thought. <laughs> That's what I thought when I was 13. I, but oh, it, that's, it's a testament to his talent, actually. And, yeah, no, and it is. How, how music spoke of everyone. any kind can reach across any barrier. Yeah. And actually, I really love that. And I love how that. How did you get out of the ghetto in the end? Uh, I, I, I got kicked out. <laughs> did you really? I did, yeah. Did you not finish Harrow? I, I, they let me back to my A levels, but there was an unfortunate incident with a girl. Oh. Um, but I, it was a very fortunate incident for me. Say no more. But it was in a very unfortunate incident for the laser eyed PE master who um, uncoupled us from each other. Okay. Sorry, Carl. Swiftly moving on. Um, but no, but it does say something about art mm. that art is now a, uh, you know, art then. You go, you know, even that famous song that he sort of really charted that um, the what the what changes, yeah. you know, the one of the one that MTV one. played back to back, yeah, constantly for, forever. Yeah. It it's so nice that the art can bring people together. So some little posh kid yeah. at Harrow can yeah. go, I empathise with the lyrics to Only God Can Judge Me. Yeah via Tupac and no, I, I agree as long as the lyrics are good and the, the thing the only reason I even glance at these conspiracy theories is because I worry that so much of these so many of these artists and so much of this art is demonic it's satanic it's like it's purposefully designed to disrupt us and to, to it's an attack on God an attack on has that always community. been? Because I've noticed that now, like this real celebration of the of yeah. devil worship. Yeah. You know, well, like it's overt, the, the Sam now, Smith it? kind of uh, yeah, literally dressed yeah. as a devil on stage doing BDSM stuff. It's like they're in your face with it. Yeah, but for so long it's been whispered and behind the scenes. And you know, there's there's uh, footage of Jay Z with uh, Marina Abramovich, you know, the the, the witchess and Satan worshiper, and. Uh, Beyonce, um, rumors about her, who used to be a Christian, you know, her lyrics, it, it was part of Destiny's Child was, you know, I'll, you'll never take my faith away from me. Yeah. And then she starts making these big hits about her sex life with Jay-Z and it all gets a bit dark. And I just think so many of them are willing to sell their souls for success, which is their business, but then they put it out there for everyone else. Is it, people get is, it, is, it, is it a new phenomenon and does it tie hand in hand with um, with like what the Soho Theatre did where they said they, there's literally a sign at the door of the Soho Theatre to check your white privilege at the door? 
it's like that's meant to be art. You're meant to put art on in here. Right, right. right. It's like yeah. so when what I'm saying is when you listened to Tupac or Biggie or yeah. someone like that who I love and I listen to the those albums all the time to this day. Yeah. They he he was singing about stuff that was real to him. Yeah. Whereas I'm not like you say, it's sort of shifted now to if you want it, you can have it. And it's, it's all overly all... sexualized. It's all overt demonic imagery. Like the symbolism behind it's not good. And I, I fear for our young it's people. It's not sexy though. But music back in the day, I mean, I sound like an old person. I'm, I'm, we are both sound old like people. Old people have always said, oh, back in the day, it used to be. But you know, the music that my grandparents listened to was actually music. Like the, there was rhythm to it. There was melody. It was beautiful, yeah. objectively. Well, Otis Redding. Yeah. yeah. There was Amazing. Sitting on the dock of the bay, just ah, peaceful. This, like you call him Mr. Place. Pitiful. He's so but, brilliant. But music affects you on a, on, a, on a spiritual, on a subconscious level. Yeah. And I think it's important that the type of music we're listening to is good. I mean, that in the objective sense of good, rather than we like the sound of it. I mean, we have to listen to music that enhances our spiritual life rather than the opposite. Where do we find it? The Americano scene is quite good for that. Is it? I quite like, well, some of those songs that try that in a small town is quite good. And uh, am I the only one who, uh, you know, the, does that, that's, no, the other, Jason Aldean. And then I think there's a lot of uh, good sort of more, possibly more spiritually minded Americana music I find quite uplifting, but I can't listen to modern hip hop. I sort of stop listening to. I find Jay Z irritating. I can't listen to modern pop in general anymore. I is, it, is it? But maybe something in our brains. Just when you get older, you just start. Some going, of it's, yeah, oh, some of it's partly our age. Definitely, it's like that's just an irritating yeah, sound. It is. Yeah, we're old, man. Which is fine. I have no problem. With I didn't that. want to be the person that was complaining about that. I well, actually know the, to... the worst thing, Lawrence, is the, the old person that doesn't. Oh, oh, God. That embraces it. My kid's school. I mean, I'm not, I'm not one to talk. Actually, no, I'm wearing a shirt. But you see some of these tragic dads, I call them, and they dress, and you're just like, this is. A, yeah, it's cringe. This is, a, this, this, is a, this is a fancy dress. <laughs> you're wearing a fancy dress. Yeah. And they're dressed like hipsters. But they got grey hair, and you're sort of going, "Aren't you culturally appropriating youth?" <laughs> youth. <laughs> yeah. So that's it's interesting, it's and then that's that's kind of a leftist mentality as well. Yeah. This terrible fear of age and yeah. death and everything. You know, it's funny, isn't it? And maybe that comes out the fact they don't believe in anything other than this four score years and ten that we have anyway. Yeah. But it's uh, it's interesting that the that art has taken such a plunge to the point where there, someone somewhere has decided it's P Diddy's time, right? It's some, someone somewhere has decided he's going down. Yeah, and if he's guilty, good. Yeah, but I, I also, I, a little part of me is like, why, you know. Why are you him and why now? Why him, why now? And what, is, what does he know that someone doesn't want known, you know? There's always something deep at. Well, it, that, that, I mean, that's the problem with being alive in 2024 is, all of the things that we we were taught, like JFK was shot by the R.B. Oswald, clearly, you, lie. you know, and then oh, and by the way, Jack Ruby, who shot the R.B. Oswald, then was shot himself. It's like, come on, guys. Yeah. So in 2024, it's one of the advantages. Well, that was the start of the conspiracy theory, wasn't it? Yeah, that's where the term came from. The magic bullet. But the but the, the point is, I'm happy that technology has given us the ability to be curious about things mm. and find out different news and you know look at what happens to the people who say it look at what they do to tucker carlson i mean they just try and destroy him yeah. destroy rogan destroy all of these people that have really good conversations yeah so art art we reclaiming art would be a much better Reclaim thing to do art. which you know i always think that why spend money on it on you know <laughs> I think you could probably affect the world more with an amazing movie or a wonderful song yeah. than you could with 12 general elections. And you know what? A lot of it comes down to lack of faith. That's what it is. When we had good art, the best art in the world, like the Renaissance art, that yeah. period was all about the greater glory of God. And we threw that out the window and made it all about the greater glory of the self. Like how can I be famous? How can I be rich? How can I be successful? How can I have people follow me? How can I have people like me? And when we reached that point of, of self-idolatry, art became rubbish. 
because it wasn't about something greater than us. The best art in the world is about something greater than us. It directs us towards God, because if something is true, beautiful and good, it will always direct us towards God. And the best actors were always trying to give you a, you know, show you what, who, what it is to be a human being, mm. which was so great. Whereas I don't think you're going to get that. For, I saw the remake of Roadhouse, the movie. Yeah, I haven't seen it. And it's so strange. It's just, you know, the original Roadhouse, which yeah. to be fair was a bit schmaltzy and weird, but at least it was kind of funny. Right. Their new Roadhouse is just a very, very, very weird film. And uh, it's, but it's very emblematic of the time. It's very jittery, nervous, and yeah. you don't really know what's going on. It makes you feel a bit weird when you watch it. But the, um, yeah, I would love, I'd love to see a return to art. And I, and if you... P. Diddy's been a bad boy from Bad Boy Records, yeah. and I hope he, then I hope he's, he um, is fully punished for it. Um, have you seen Good Morning America? No. Uh, that is one of, the, one of those Apple TV programs. Right. right. It's it's not necessarily enjoyable. It's quite intense. It's quite, it's not like a relaxing program, but it's interesting because it's so real. Really? As in, it's just like GB News. It's like all, all the presenters, all the backstabbing and someone gets fired and no one stands up for them and all this kind of stuff. It's like watching the experience that we live through <laughs> in television form. Time. Do you think we should start a GB News survivors group? <laughs> Do you, no. do you think we should? It'd no. just be you and me, and occasionally Dan would come in and go, I've just had another email. <laughs> Guys, I don't know what to do. I've, I've had an email from Interloss again. <laughs> okay, calm down, Dan. Yeah, it would. Just yeah. say, hello, my name's Dan, and I... I did his show last week. Did you? Yeah, a town hall with him on uh, he, Substack. He hasn't invited me on. No. He's got a... I think, well, maybe you'll say something inappropriate and get him cancelled. Who knows? Well, I can't get him cancelled. He's already been cancelled. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, the, the great thing about cancelling is after a while, it's just, you know, it's just everything's a nail to yeah. a hammer. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, the the, year, the days of cancelling are going to come to an end too. Well, there's also, don't forget, Mercy Maroki and Alex Phillips and soon to be Neil Oliver. So the Survivors Club's growing. Oh, did, what happened to Mercy Maroki? I'm not going into that. For legal reasons. <laughs> okay. People uh, can look up their own conspiracy theories. Yeah, I know the Alex Phillips, what happened. And um, Neil, Neil is, Neil's hanging in there, man. God bless him. God bless Neil. Yeah, he will be next. He will not be next, Calvin. Come on, don't, you're not. They are pushing him out with this, take your content online, record a two-hour show, we'll edit it down to one hour and put it on air. Like, they're clearly trying to get rid of the most controversial stuff and essentially control him. It's horrible to see what's happening. I know. And to have that as your sole source of income is um, is dreadful. I'm very lucky, actually, in my funding, in the fact that I'm, no one tries to control me. Yeah. I'm, I'm sometimes rem remonstrated with if I um, go over the top, which is ov obviously very rare yeah. for me. As you know, Calv, I'm not a emotional person who gets upset about things quickly. No, I can't imagine that. And I'm really slow to temper. Yeah, you always think before you tweet. And... So I do, actually. <laughs> I do. That's that's the worrying part. That's a nonsense. Yeah, last time I was here, you, you said, have you seen this story? I said, no. By the time I'd left the building, you'd already tweeted about it. I'm like, how does it work? Where, who, does he have someone tweeting for him? What was the story? I can't remember now. But yeah, no. I, I was just astonished at the speed. If I, yeah, I'm quite good at digesting information. In fact, because you didn't even stop. I think we went to the pub and we were having a meeting with someone. And by the time I got out, the tweet was up. I'm like, but he's been chatting to this guy the whole time. When did he tweet? <laughs> I think I probably went and had a cigarette. Because uh, I have sort of thought, the thoughts whizzing around my head all day. I, my filter for them should improve, hopefully, with age. I'm, I'm fingers crossed oh. that I start. Because I'm even becoming a bit more moderate about certain things. Mm. Like, how do you, when there's such a chasm between people, how do you make that chasm less wide? How do you bridge the gap? Yeah, because you can't live in a world where you there's so much, there's a, the level of hatred mm. and animosity towards people yeah. as we live in now. Well, or we just declare war and well, war on the people that we don't agree with. That's it. Either it comes to a head and there's a, there's a war, or we find something that unites us all, an enemy that is joining us all together. An enemy, yeah. Yeah, a shared enemy. What's, th yeah, yeah. What's the devil in Islam? Is he in, do they have uh, Muhammad. Oh, God. <laughs> <Awful>. What? <laughs> 
What about you're just a moderate Muslim who's sat at home, who cares about their kids and yeah, their family, I, I, works I hard. I pray for those people because they maybe they just doesn't see us by go the to the mosque all the time, mm. isn't praying five times a day, but yeah. you know, is comes from a culturally uh, Islamic background yeah. who's just trying to knuckle down in yeah. this world. What about them? You can't what about say them. I pray for their conversion. I pray that they are saved. Right. I don't hate these people. No, I know you don't. You I don't. just I don't. I'm sorry that they've been deceived. Right. And um, remind me not to go on holiday with you to the Middle East. I would never go. Welcome. Hi, what, Kevin. Why are they looking at us like that? I can only think of one what relatively safe country in the Middle East, and that's currently at war. So, which one? Well, Israel. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Bring the hostages home. Still. Mm. I will wear that because um, I feel it's dreadful that what's like, happening in London. But that's going to get called a Zionist now as well. Oh, I good Zionist, whatever. I was speaking to someone the other day, and um, they said I hadn't spoken to them for four months, and they said, "I said, well, why haven't we spoken for so long?" And they said to me, um, "Well, last time we spoke, you called me an anti-Semite," and I said. Oh, yeah, you were being anti Semitic. <laughs> <laughs> so, I did, so I did call you on it. Yeah. So, yeah. um, so that was that. Anyway, what's, um, what's for is, you? This next? is the latest thing that's dividing us, though, isn't it? There's always a big thing. But I think you like can't. COVID, it, Brexit, Israel, um, Ukraine. There's always a big dividing topic in, in our and the, lives. The bridge. What, the one that got knocked down? Yeah. By a real ship, yeah. Why not? I mean, no, not real. I know it happened. Okay, but um, accident or deliberate? Why would it be on purpose? It's the biggest trading route on the eastern seaboard of the United States. Mm. That road. Um, I haven't heard any conspiracies about that. So, you don't far, I just saw a, a ship driving. Well, you just said to me. There's always some big drama. Yeah, there is. That, that's quite dramatic. I don't know, necessarily mean there's always a conspiracy. It shut down a large amount of America's transport infrastructure. Okay, that's unfortunate. Can't carry hazardous fuels, can't carry... like It's going to really damage Baltimore and that part of the world. Yeah. I don't know what the answer to it is, but I just thought we'd have to mention the bridge. And seeing as one of our friends put in the group this morning, of the only WhatsApp group, I'm... One of I'm not the in only that group one. anymore. You're not in that group. I left that group ages ago. You leave it. You've left all the groups. I don't want to be in groups. I quite like that group because there was a, someone sent me a picture of the bridges, um, to saying I have information which may lead to Hillary Clinton getting her <laughs> <laughs> get, getting jailed. That's good. Uh, and then that's it, definitely it, a way to get yourself killed, it, it even took, for a bridge. It took me. It took me a really long time to work out what the joke was, and I was sat again. Why am I so thick? And then I finally <laughs> wrote there. Anyway, um, any interesting gossip for for next week? No, um, I don't even know what date it is as this goes out, so I don't know what's coming up next week. But I'm sure there'll be another Calvin's Common Sense Crusade at 3 p.m. on Thursday. There'll be another Fox and Father at 7 p.m. And that, what else do people need? Nothing. Nothing in their lives. Um, send us in... Oh, by the way, send us in stories that you want us to talk about because I want to do a one a complete blind one where we have absolutely so i don't even know what i'm giving calvin That's and cool. he doesn't even know what he's giving me yeah. and um also i think it'll it'll mean that we'll get some w weird things that we might not go yeah so, you know and go as babylon b as you like go as bonkers as you like um so send them in follow us on reclaim the media and yeah write some down in the comments and thank you again for joining us it's goodbye from the fox and it's goodbye. God bless. Take care. Bye, darling. <laughs> <laughs>